Hi guys, welcome into your abs, buns, and guns. For today, you are gonna need to bring in a pair of ankle weights if you have them, as well as a light set of dumbbells, maybe even a medium set, and then one small loop band. So you're gonna place this loop band just off to the side or off to the top of your mat. Your dumbbells, the light pairs, I'm talking really light, two or three pounds, maybe up to five, is gonna split towards the back portion of your mat. We'll use those uh, almost right away. If you're wearing the ankle weights, if you have them, they're gonna go on, you can leave them on for the whole class. If you don't have them, that's fine, you're gonna use without, or if at any point, if it's bothering your hips, your low back, your knees, take the ankle weights off, do the movements without it, build strength with just your own body weight and really working the different range of motion and gaining the mobility in all of those different places then add the weight so before we get started um, our theme for today is really we're talking about our greatest fears and how that can contribute to our greatest growth so it has the potential for greatest growth opportunity so if you know I've been one of them that uh, when things get scary or we have to step outside of our comfort zone, whether that is in our fitness practice or out in the world, in our job, in our relationships, we sometimes hide away from that, right? We don't take the chance, we don't take the risk, but when you take the risk, it's going to provide you with the greatest amount of growth, the greatest opportunities are gonna come out of that. So I encourage you to keep that mindset, that growth mindset throughout this entire practice and as you step back into your day. That's enough talking, we're gonna get started, we're gonna get moving. Feet are gonna come cross-legged position. So I'll face you to start. We're just gonna warm up the spine. So sitting up nice and tall, hands come on the knees, and just start moving the spine, the chest forward, chest back. And you can really feel the chest and the stretch as you press forward and then round the spine. You can use the hands on the knees as you lean back. So it's gonna help the balance. And then reverse the circle. And just kind of checking in with the body at the start here, noticing if you're feeling any fatigue, whether that's because you didn't get a good night's sleep, maybe you didn't get good hydration or nutrition, or you're tired from previous workouts, last two, or maybe you're feeling strong, you're feeling energized and ready to go. Last one, sitting up nice and tall, you're gonna close the knees so the feet come flat on the floor, hip width distance apart, reach the arms forward, take an inhale to sit tall, exhale, tilt the pelvis, scoop and hollow, round, halfway, inhale, lift, exhale, hip to rib connection, so we're just starting that core engagement, moving back into a seated C curve. So keep moving, if I hold that position just for a second, I'm not in a flat back, so it's not a hinge back with a straight spine. I'm actually taking a small tilt of the pelvis, drawing the hip points towards the sternum, towards the ribs, and I'm in a seated C curve. Last three. Two, the abs are gonna act as brakes on the way back. Lift, now we add the rotation. Left elbow back, right arm pull forward. Twist and switch. Elbow doesn't need to touch the floor, but it's almost like a bow and arrow. So if you have ever done archery, you know that it has that pulling back on the string at the same time that you're pressing forward. Now we wanna keep the knees and the hips quiet and just work on using the rotation from the obliques and activation of the transverse abdominis and deep pelvic floor. For five, four, three, two, last one, come back up and hold, palms up, roll the shoulders back and down, come back into your halfway seated C-curve, roll back, just twist left and right. So now I want you to imagine that you have like serving dishes on your hands, and you're not gonna drop them, palms stay up. You're just rotating the dish to the outside of the left knee, outside of the right knee. The further you lean back, the harder it's gonna be. Modification, bring it a little bit higher. Just here for 10, nine, eight, seven. You notice the arms aren't moving side to side. They're staying in line with the shoulders for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale to center. Exhale, roll all the way down onto your back, nice and slow, with control. Now you're gonna walk the feet out, 
Grab one dumbbell with your left hand. The legs are hip width distance. We're gonna work the right side, the right leg first. Right hand goes behind the head, elbows wide. Left elbow is bent at 90 degrees. So kind of like you're doing a chest press. This is the only thing that's happening with the left arm. The right leg's gonna bend to extend. Head and shoulders lift. So I'm reaching the left hand up to the ceiling or towards the right foot or towards the midline. Right leg is coming in to bend, develop and extend. It bends back and then I release it back to a hover. Head and shoulders are lifting so that I can come into a C-curve, peeling off the floor on the exhale breath. But even on the inhale, I'm not relaxing in this position, right? So I want to keep everything tight, lower back pressing into the floor, belly pulled in. And I hold the tension on the core, even in this position, the left elbow is barely touching. 15 seconds to go, and we're gonna add on to these movements. Working everything on the right side. 10 seconds. Breathing out through the mouth, in through the nose. For five, four, elbow wide, three, collarbones open, two, shoulders back and down. Last one. Now you're just gonna extend the legs a little bit wider and extend the left arm back. So I'm gonna lift the head and shoulders off, left arm's extended, right leg is lifted. Keep the right hand where it is. And I'm just pulling in towards a diamond shape. So I'm bending the right knee, keeping the external rotation of the hip. The left hand dumbbell is reaching towards the right ankle. Breathing here, keeping the left hip and leg anchored down and not letting your body roll to the side. 15 seconds, lower is harder. Modification, just take it a little bit higher. Like so, on the angle. For five, four, three, two. Quads are already burning, last one. Lower down, inhale, exhale, half the starfish. So we're just staying on this side. If you need a little bit more momentum, you can use the right arm coming out to the side. But it's our, well, almost like a single leg V up. The legs are just a little bit wider at the base. You wanna make this harder, leave the right hand behind the head, and then no momentum to come up. Articulate through the spine, pull abs in and up. Belly pulls in towards the spine, and then you're gonna pull all of those core muscles and the organs up towards your heart. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, last one. Grab both dumbbells now, keep the legs wide. They're gonna go wide to narrow. Both arms can go back, inhale. Exhale, head and shoulders lift. Reach the arms forward, legs come into a tabletop. Modification, you're gonna do this without dumbbells, or you can take the ankle weights off. If you need to further modify, one, two, one, two, right? You come up, one leg at a time. Advance, I need both legs to come up, and I need both dumbbells to reach forward at the same time. Nice and slow. High tension and time under tension to move through that range of motion. Last 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release the dumbbells. Grab the backs of the thighs, just three rock and rolls. And you're gonna come all the way up and onto your right side. So I'm gonna work everything on the right. I'm not mirroring you, so I might look a little funky, but you're gonna get on your right elbow, fold the bottom right leg in, left hand's gonna have the dumbbell, left leg is extended, first in line with the hip. So just